Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today we're going to talk about the settings on microphones, what they mean, and how to use them. Uh, pay no attention to the mess behind me. I'm rearranging the studio, and it, it, I'm not moving. Don't freak out. Okay, so microphones. They're simple, but then sometimes they have these like buttons and switches on them, and it can be kind of confusing. So what are they, and how do they work? So some microphones, like the one I'm speaking into here, the Personas PX1, or this Roswell Mini K87, there's no buttons or switches on them. So typically that just means they're a regular old microphone, you sing into this side, you're good to go. However, other microphones, for example, this, uh, <laughs> the, the label's broken off and I've had to write the settings in Sharpie on here, but this is a CAD M179. It's got two switches and like a little dial that you can turn with funny shapes on it. So what what does all this mean if you have a microphone with these? Should you mess with the settings and what does it do if you do mess with them? We're going to talk about today there are three main settings you will find on a microphone. The first is pretty simple and it's just called a high pass filter. Now that seems like fancy stuff. It's, it's not that confusing. So high pass just means it lets the high frequencies, the higher stuff, pass through. In other words, probably a better name would be low cut. It cuts out the lows. Now, how do you know if you have one of these switches on there? Sometimes it'll be labeled HPF or maybe just HP, but typically you'll see it on there and it'll look something like this. So it's a, this is a, essentially a picture of what it would look like on an EQ. So if we took an EQ and we rolled off the low end, that's what that would look like, basically. Um, and then you may sometimes see a number here. So if it's rolling off everything below 80 hertz, um, you'll see that there. This is great for rolling off rumble um, on a voice or s guitars and things where you don't want to pick up any of that low stuff. So I would use this. I've got one on my voice right now set to, it's actually set to 100, 110. And it's rolling off. I still sound full, but it's getting rid of kind of the rumble, rumble stuff that might be there. And if I turn that number up, for example, it starts to sound like this. Okay, so that's, that's, not, that's not pleasant. Um, but this is typically just a single switch that turns this either on or off. Let's, uh, and the other thing you might see is sometimes it might give you a couple of options. So it might be a high-pass filter, but then you have the option of rolling off below 80 or... 40. I said those backwards. Um, here's an example of that. This is the Rode NT2A. This is kind of the pretty popular mic. It's the upgrade from the NT1A, and it gives you a lot of options. As you can see here, the, the middle switch there, it has that symbol we were showing, that little high-pass filter looking deal. If you flip it to the up position, that's going to roll off everything below 80 hertz. And if you flip it to the down position, that's going to roll off everything below 40 hertz. So one is removing more low end than the other. Typical uses for this, if I'm doing a vocal, I'm going to have probably one of these switches on, probably the 80. If I'm doing a kick drum with a microphone or something like that, or a bass guitar, I'm probably not going to do anything to it. Um, guitar amp, I might roll off one or the other, see which one sounds better. So that's the first setting. Probably if you only have one setting on a microphone, that might be it. The next setting you're going to see on some microphones has to do with something called polar patterns. Now, as much as I wish this had to do with polar bears, that's not true. This has to do with the direction that the microphone picks up. Typical microphones, again, if it doesn't have anything on it, it's picking up from one specific direction. So typically it's picking up in the direction of the logo. So this microphone is picking up from this direction. So right now it's picking up me, now it's picking up you. So it's very much just picking up in one direction. But there are some types of microphones that give you the option to pick up in two directions, in the front of the mic and the back of the mic. And then there are some that let you do that in all directions. Okay, there are names for these and those correspond to certain specific shapes, which can be a little confusing, but once you understand it, it's super easy. For example, let's take this directional one here. Here's what like, if you were to draw how the microphone hears sound, if the microphone's facing down in this picture, then the back of the microphone isn't picking up much at all, but then the front of the microphone is picking up all the sound. What does that look like, right? Looks like a heart. So microphones that pick up in one direction and have this kind of polar pattern are called, oops, I can't even spell. I can't talk and spell at the same time. They're called cardioid microphones. So if you ever see a heart-ish shape, that's a cardioid. Let's go back to this microphone here. You can see it. Now, it's not exactly heart-shaped, but this one right here on that top switch, 
you'll see that looks like a number eight, and then over to the right, you'll see one that looks like an upside down heart. That's the cardioid. So the two other shapes you can see right here, the figure eight shape means it's picking up in the front and the back of the microphone, and then the circle means it's picking up in all directions. Now, for me personally, especially in a home recording studio, if you're doing voiceover, whatever you're doing, 99% of the time, I'm just going to go with cardioid, which means it's picking up in one direction and it's not picking up everywhere else. If you go with one of the other ones, it's going to pick up a lot of sound in the room, which may be cool if you need to pick up the room sound for a cool drum tone or something. But if you're trying to get a nice quiet sound of a source like a voice, typically cardioid is the way to go. Now, these can come in lots of shapes and sizes. So this is how the Rode does it. Um, Popular microphone, the AKG C414, has actually five options. So as you click through, each one of these has a light on it that lights up. The first one is Omni. The second one is, and third are kind of different versions of cardioid. And then the fourth one, you'll notice it kind of looks like it picks up on one side and a little bit on the other. That's sometimes called either super cardioid or hyper cardioid. So it, it picks up like really specifically in one direction and then picks up a little bit in the rear direction. So it's got a lot of picking up here, but it also picks up a little here. But what that means is it doesn't pick up the stuff on the sides too much. So typically I'll use that um, specifically when I'm miking my tom drums on a drum kit. So it just looks and listens to the toms, but doesn't listen to the stuff right next to it. And then maybe picks up a little bit behind it, but that's typically the ceiling, so that's no big deal. Um, I, that in a live environment as well, it's helpful to pick up the vocalist and not pick up the sound of the wedges. Helps with feedback and things like that. Uh, how, do, how do other microphones handle it? Here is the way Neumann handles it. It's just a switch, and you've got those several different patterns there. I think that second one is called maybe Wide Cardioid. Um, but this is the one I've got here. This is that CAD M179. It has a rotary dial that goes between the different modes. You can actually morph between the patterns and get a lot of different types of settings. And this left switch here is actually the high pass switch. You can't even see it on that picture, which is crazy, but um, it just is a switch that turns the high pass filter on or off. And since there's no number there, we just have to assume maybe it's 60 or 80. We'll have to read the manual to know. And then that third switch, the one on the right, is the final setting that you might see on your microphones. And that's just simply called a pad. So pads are the least used features on microphones for me personally. All it is is just a volume cut. So if you are putting the microphone on a very loud source, a screaming vocalist, uh, a really loud drum, um, a really loud guitar amp, it may be that even on your preamp, if you have the input on your interface turned all the way down, it's still clipping, the source is too loud, you should either get a different microphone or engage the pad if the microphone has one. So typically it's a switch and it says something like negative 20 or negative 30 usually, and it's just on or off. And all this does is literally cut the output of the microphone so that it's not clipping the next stage, typically the preamp that it's plugged into. So as you can see here, this microphone has that. It has a zero and a 20. Zero means the pad is off. 20 means it's cutting it by 20 decibels. That's pretty typical. But then on these other microphones, you'll notice there is no pad on these. The 414 might have a pad on the back, actually. Oh, cool. So the back of the 414 has four different or three different pads to choose from. So we can choose from no pad, minus 6, minus 12, minus 18. So a lot of variation there, and also three different versions of the high-pass filter. You can see it says 40, 80, and 160. It has the little symbol for high-pass filter, and it has HZ, which is, stands for hertz. That's how we measure different frequencies. So it has a high-pass at 40 hertz, 80 hertz, and 160 hertz. 414, I haven't used one in years, but it is such a versatile microphone, and part of what makes it so versatile is that you can do all these different polar patterns and have all these different pads and high-pass filters on one single microphone. Well, there you go. hope that was helpful for you in figuring out how to use those switches if you have them on your microphone. If you're torn between two different microphones, if you see yourself needing to create a little more variety in your sound or in your capability in the studio, then maybe at least one microphone in your collection could have some of these switches on there so you can change things out. Like I said, most of my microphones 
don't have switches, but the ones that do, I do end up using them quite a bit. Specifically this one on toms to get that hypercardioid pattern with the pad engaged so that he can hit the toms as hard as he wants and I get a nice cool sound that rejects most of the other sounds. If you're doing typical just voiceover stuff, sound for video or film or gaming, uh, a regular cardioid mic is fine. If you end up getting a microphone with switches and you think, oh no, I don't need them, don't worry about it. Just set it up like a normal cardioid microphone, turn the pad off probably, um, set it to cardioid mode, maybe the high pass filter at 40, 80 or so, and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching this. If you liked this and you like talking about audio and recording and all the technology and technique involved, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to see my list of gear recommendations for the home studio, you can go to homestudiocorner slash gear and check out my guide there. Thanks for watching. See ya.